Hey guys, so she looks like a whole car now. I got the front uh, bolted on, locked down the way it would live if it was, you know, for permanent. You can see I've run my body lines, got them all nice and straight. Uh, same on this side. If you're going down the car, you can actually see I put tape running down that body line, just keeping them together. Obviously, I'll be worked just a little better than that. It's going to be this fender is just sitting on here, basically. I've got a couple bolts in it, but that's it. Um, still believe this door is bent. I, I tried today to to move this out, thinking if I move the top out, that it would kick the bottom in and move the top out. This top is, is out all the way as far as it'll go. So literally that door needs to be twisted. Uh, you can see the gaps here. Uh, these are actually a little tight. This is 3 16 here and it won't fit. So it's actually a little tight. So that's gonna need to come out a little more anyway. These are actually pretty dang good. Now this is, like I said, just sitting on there. So uh, it needs to be, that'll be adjusted out a little bit farther and stuff like that. But you can see I got my body lines the way I wanted them. Um, my gaps, for the most part, too tight up here. I'll fix that. Again, when this comes out, the door gets twisted the way it's supposed to and goes in down here. That'll change that. This is already pretty much 3 16 all the way up. So I won't have to do, hopefully won't have to do any cutting on this panel uh, for the gaps. We'll just have to see when I when it gets welded down and taken care of for for good. Uh, same on this side. You already saw that yesterday. Uh, gaps again. It's just hanging on here, so it's pretty close. Could gap a little bit. Needs to be a little looser up here, so that'll come forward. And so I'll have to, to work these a little bit, but this is all movable back and forth. My main goal was to make sure that my doors, you can see that's 3 16 pretty much all the way up. That's pretty much the way it's good, that would live right there. So that's really, really nice. And this side is really good. The door lines and everything are good. So yeah, I can play with that and get that moved where I want it. So just thought I'd show you that real quick. I was gonna give you guys a couple of tips that I've learned over the years, basically. Uh, one thing that I don't think I considered when I first started doing this kind of stuff, and I, it, when I started working at the body shop, I never understood why the very first thing we did of any car that came into our shop was to wash it. I mean, just hot water, Dawn soap, and just scrub the piss out of the car, clean it really good, and then bring it in, and wax and grease remove it, and do all that before we ever did anything else. We didn't. We'd bring it in. If it had a dent here, we'd wipe the area off and freaking go to town. We're fixing the dent and sanding and doing all that. And then we'd wonder why we had fish eye issues and stuff like that. If you think about this car's 50 years old, God knows how many times it's been waxed, uh, it's got road tar thrown up all over it, it's got bug guts and everything else you can think of, tree sap and freaking you name it. Well that's all on that paint still. So if I just take a sander and I just go right on up to that door there and start sanding it down and the fender and sanding and all that kind of stuff what am i doing i'm grinding that into the the metal and into the, into the finish and whatever else i'm sanding it down to um, so you have that contamination in there so for, for me to use first thing you want to do if you're going to restore your car get you some hot ass water with some soap and scrub your car down really good get all the crap off it that you can and then come in and wax and grease remove it before you ever start putting grinding stuff into your finish uh, or even to, into your bare metal. Uh, that'll stop probably quite a few problems straight off the bat. Um, and I've done that on these. Uh, 
then the whole a lot of these panels are been replaced but everything that hasn't been replaced has all been clean wax and grease removed and the whole thing so uh, what else somebody said they didn't know that the the bottom of the door gaps most people don't know where to start a restoration um, and I'm, I was just like everybody else I learned just like everyone else but that's where you start ultimately that is where you start especially if you're going to replace your quarter panels and all that stuff if your quarter panels are on there don't take them off first get everything lined up get all your gap get your door bottom of your door gaps lined up make sure all that's right check your gaps before you start pulling the car apart and seeing where they are noting where your you know if it's an original um, quarter panel and stuff like that you're going to want to you know note where all that stuff is Get you a book, which I did. I've got right, matter of fact, right here. Uh, get you a notebook like this and write everything down. Now, mine's not fancy, but I wrote tons of dimensions down. And you know, I, I think that was a frame jig, and this is driver side rocker. And I drew out pictures of the inner workings, and this is the firewall, and how far the brace was that I put in. and how far all that was across um, passenger side brace coming across and how far down from the rockers measured all that down that way when I put it back together it would go right back where it was supposed to be well here's the problem with this car this car was wrecked so all that changed a little bit because when I braced this up I braced it in a wrecked position so as I went through it and started realizing okay this is not where this was supposed to go it's supposed to be out about a half an inch because whenever they fixed it they didn't do that those dimensions started changing so some of these weren't pertinent to me but uh if you don't have a wrecked car that stuff's going to be critical critical uh inside the trunk to the to the bottom of the package tray i've got 13 three eighths you know, I knew exactly where, because I got this, pulled this car in, in two pieces, you know, the top from the bottom. So I needed to know exactly where that's going to sit. Um, just lots of stuff like that. Just, just some stuff I'm kind of throwing at you guys if you're not, if you're kind of debating on where to start with something like this. Um, do your homework first, you know. Do some study and get online and find uh, other people that are doing what you want to do, uh, guys like me that are doing it and having success, and study what those guys do and what's working and what's not working. Um, I obviously still have a long ways to go. This car will come completely back apart down to the skeleton to where I can sandblast everything, the roof's coming off, all that stuff. I've got all new, I got new roof, new everything, all that stuff. But right now, I know I have a peace of mind. If I put this car back, which I've got it all bolted, I put those little 316 holes and bolts everything together, so it's going to go right back where it is right now. I know at the end of this, I'm not going to be. There's not going to be a oh shit moment where I did something, welded the rocker on, and now the gap is completely screwed because I know it's not. I've looked at all of it, and it looks amazing. I couldn't be happier with the way this car's turned out at this point. Now, obviously, this will be refined down to ridiculous because that's just the way I do things. But once I get everything welded together and all that kind of stuff, and get everything internally coated with, you know, my primers and whatever I'm going to use to paint the insides of the fender wells and all that kind of stuff, and everything's done in there, this car will go back together just like that will be gapped the whole thing and then I will start the body work and block the whole car together I'll use those lines um, this line here I'll tape that off I'll sand this as one unit all the way down one full unit block straight completely end to end then separate here, this, all the way down. One full piece. Not this panel, then this. But it's going to be one solid straight down. Then I'm moving down to here. Same thing. That whole area will be one consistent area. That body line all the way down. And then work those door, the, that 
Same up here. All one piece. Okay? All one piece. That's how it'll be. And that way when you look down this car, it'll be glass ass straight. Because I didn't block the door off the car or the fender off the car. I'm not saying you can't do that because you can do that. But at some point, in my opinion, if you want it straight, you need to put the whole car back together and then block it one final you know, good time to where it's all together, everything's on the same plane, the whole thing. I've even seen guys, which I think is a great idea, and I'm probably going to do it. I've seen guys put, when they're doing their filler, they'll actually leave a little bit of filler in there to keep these panels together to where they're not, you know I mean? So when you're sanding across it, it just stays one panel. Okay, and we're talking about just a skim coat. And you're gonna cut that back out. This is gonna be all metal, so don't get me wrong. I'm not gonna cover my whole car in Bondo like you're probably thinking. But um, one of the top guys does that. Leaves just a little bit of filler in the, in the gap here and just makes it one panel. This whole thing, just one panel. Um, to me, that's what I'm looking. I don't know if that's what you're looking for, but that's what I'm looking for. When you look down this, I want it to just be like a piece of glass down through there. So that's kind of my goal for this. And yes, I'm going to drive the shit out of it. Uh, I'm going to put a roll cage in it. I want to race it, uh, not at the drag strip. I want to race it on a track. Um, so yeah, it'll get beat on. Um, they make a clear bra stuff that I actually had on one of my other cars. And you can buy them in big sheets. And I'm thinking about taking some of that and putting it, once this is all painted and everything real nice, and lining this with clear bra. That way the rocks that fly up will actually hit that and not the paint. Now, I don't know how effective that'll be, but and I may have to change it out quite a bit, but it's real easy. I mean, you just squeegee it. It just sticks on there pretty easily. Um, areas like that that are getting rock chipped and stuff from like doing burnouts and stuff like that I was thinking that would be a good idea for that but yeah I thought I'd make a quick video just to kind of show you what I've got what the car's looking like I'm real happy with it if I can get that door uh, fixed I'll be even happier um, as you can see it's just kicked out just a little bit at the bottom it just needs to be tweaked a little bit but I think I'm going to end up having to take that glass out of there in, to end up doing that. So, but yeah, finally got it where I want it. So, yeah, once I start getting it, once I pull it apart and get things prepped, the next time it goes together, it's getting welded for good. It's going to be welded back together. Then we'll start the, uh, the body work, get all that knocked out, get it in paint. Um, obviously the motors that's a whole different animal I gotta figure out my motor and transmission I'm hoping for for LS motor and a six speed um, I'm gonna ask Santa Claus for, for that for Christmas and see if, see if I get it um, <clears throat> but that just takes some saving some money so I'll be working back and forth on this one um, I pretty much just stopped because I wanted to do this one now I'm at a place where I may come back to this, get this motor in here and try to get this out of here to where I can have more room to, to work. But there you go. Super happy. I think I said that already. You can't imagine how happy I am with this. I mean, I don't have to really do much to that. That actually just needs to open up a little bit more. Um, Daryl's car I had to like reshape that put metal in and all kinds of stuff so I think these are probably original uh, 68 Camaro uh, fenders they're probably not original to this car but I think they are original because I couldn't find any Le Mans blue paint on this that door and that fender that door is original obviously that back there is original and then the other parts are all going to be uh, aftermarket new floors new trunk, new firewall, pretty much everything's new. New upper upper cow, or I guess that's the lower cow. The upper cow is the one that goes up top. Um, not sure if I'll use that hood or not. May just buy another one. 
I'll probably strip that down and see how bad it is, but that one fell off the wall uh, when I had it over here and it jacked that edge up. And I, I beat it back out some, but you can still, if you look close enough, you can still see that ridge. And since that's a double panel, I don't know. I can get, I could probably get it pretty straight, but those hoods aren't that expensive, so. <clears throat> anyway. That's it. All these are all measured up exactly where they're, where they're supposed to be. That's another thing you want to do too if I'm giving advice. Measure these because these quarter windows are important. You don't want these too wide or too tight. You too tight, it won't, your window won't roll up. Too loose, it's, things are just going to sit and beat back and forth. It's going to be terrible. So make sure you measure this um, all the way up and get those right on both sides. Um, man, that little stuff like that's important. It's imperative to get that to get that right. Otherwise, you're gonna have no shit moment at the end of the day because you've already welded this on and you're like, oh my God, now what do you do, you know? Because it's too tight and I can't get my window to roll up or it's too loose or whatever. So that's why I mocked the whole car up like this. That's why I'm doing the way I'm doing it. There won't be any surprises. All these gaps will be really, it's just, that's beautiful. That is beautiful, straight off the get-go. I mean, I'm, you know, super happy with this. There's a dent right there. That's the same thing on Daryl's car. Of course, I replaced his panels too. That must just be a thing with these. Right here, there's a, it's a, must be from the stamping or the way the, and I had to I had to fix that on Daryl's car. I'm gonna have to fix that on this one too. I wonder if it's the same over here. Yep, sure is, right? You you might even be able to see it kind of go off. Sure shit. Yeah, you know, we'll get we'll get to that when we start body working it. So alright guys, uh appreciate you watching and uh I know I've got a lot of new subscribers lately, and I'm glad you guys uh jumped on board. I hope you can pick something up from me, and if there's anything you can teach me, I'm all ears. Um, like I said, I have, I've, I've been doing it for quite a while, but I haven't been doing it for 30 or 40 years or whatever like some guys have been. So, um, Man, there's another dent right there. I bet that's from... You see guys that will lean their elbows on cars? That's a no-no. Uh, get up there and you know do this and end up putting a dent in the panel so that's, that's why you see these car shows they say unless you're naked don't touch my car well if you're naked don't touch my car because if you lean up against it that's where all these little dents and stuff come from that's probably from me late laying over trying to get in the motor compartment and leaning on this and that's about the size of my freaking leg right here probably dented that in so yeah, now you can see, now that I've scuffed this up a little bit, you can see where all the lows are. So, all right.